1992 was the final year before the King of the Ring pay-per-view was introduced, so the only big shows WWE ran all year were its big four. Surely that meant high quality across the board, right? Um... Still, despite the relatively small pool of matches, we are never one to back down from a challenge, so we've done some digging and pulled even more wrestling tat out for you to enjoy. You can thank us later. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE matches of 1992. Join us. Number 10, Bret Hart vs. The Mountie on Primetime Wrestling Primetime Wrestling was a weekly WWE show that ran from 1986 to 1993, right before Monday Night Raw came along and stole its spot for good. The program would play footage of matches from WWE live events, as well as host interviews and bring viewers up to date on the goings-on in the company. On October 26, 1992, Primetime Wrestling aired a match between WWE Champion Bret Hart and The Mountie. There was actually a really good story here, as The Mountie had beaten Bret for the IC title earlier in the year. Now the Canadian law enforcement expert was out to see whether or not he could do it again for the biggest prize in the business. So, what happened? Well, Hart beat the maple syrup out of his fellow countrymen and won with a suplex in 30 seconds. Great. This match was too short to be really bad, but imagine how annoyed you would have been if you thought you were getting a world title match on TV only for it to end like this. Number 9. Crush vs Repo Man at SummerSlam SummerSlam 1992, London, England, Wembley Stadium, one of the most attended, most iconic wrestling shows of all time. Just a shame there were a fair few stinkers on it. One match that was more boring than outright terrible was this sub-six minute clash between Crush and the Repo Man. The pair had both been part of Demolition, but it felt like the storyline potential here wasn't really taken advantage of. Perhaps because it would have had to involve telling people that Smash now repossessed people's items for a living and it just wasn't worth it. Instead, we got a pretty bland match designed to put over the power of the younger guy. This bout was positioned between the tag team and world title matches on the evening, so it's clear that it was solely designed as a palate cleanser. Still, palate cleansers can be good sometimes, so this has no excuse. Number 8. Owen Hart vs Skinner at WrestleMania 8 The 8th edition of wrestling's biggest show advertised two matches as main events. Actually, I guess that's quite conservative compared to today's Mania cards, isn't it? So, WWE had Savage vs Flair, they had Hogan vs Sid, but the question still remained. What about the other seven matches on the show? Well, somebody had the bright idea of pitting a man who likes alligators against a bloke wearing a giant colourful tent. I hope they got fired. Owen Hart made his way down to the ring, got beaten up by Skinner for a bit, and then rolled up the Swamp Man to win in 1 minute and 36 seconds. Yep, that was it. That was the whole match. Skinner didn't even get an entrance. Why this match had to be on WrestleMania is just beyond me, and it was the second to last match of the night. This was technically the semi-main event. What the hell? Squash matches were still very much a part of WrestleMania at this time, but this was a particularly bad one. Owen got nothing out of looking weak for 90% of the match, and Skinner lost to the guy who he had just made look rubbish for most of the bout. Number 7. Big Boss Man vs Nails at Survivor Series what a year Kevin Wackholz had in 1992. The man behind the Nails gimmick debuted early in the year, had a series of pretty bad matches over the next 12 or so months, and then got released from his contract after he allegedly attacked Vince McMahon backstage over a pay dispute. That is one hell of a way to get fired. The ex-convict's final major match for the company took place at Survivor Series and was just as awful as everything else he had done that year. Well, except for the alleged assault and all that. Nails' main feud had been with the big boss man, whom he accused of violently beating him when he was in prison. Bloody hell, that is quite dark, isn't it? This led to the nightstick on a pole match, which sounds exciting, but actually followed a pretty dull formula. One person goes to get the stick, then they get knocked down, then the other person goes for the stick, then they get knocked down, rinse and repeat. Boss Man eventually won, but this was a total slog to get through. Honestly, they should have both served time for this one. Way! Number 6. The Undertaker vs Kamala at Survivor Series On the same night that Nails and Bossman bored everyone to death with their match, another long-running feud also ended in underwhelming fashion. The Undertaker and Kamala had been beefing since the summer and were set to finish their rivalry once and for all in the first ever coffin match. No, not a casket match. 
WWE hadn't decided they preferred that word yet. Coffin or casket matches are still rarely that fun to watch over 30 years later, so imagine how mind-bendingly boring this one must have been. Much has been said about early Undertaker's style not meshing well with other big men, and this slow plodding battle is prime proof of that. These two monoliths went back and forth for a little over five minutes before a well-placed urn to the dome allowed Taker to get the pinfall victory. Wait a second, I thought you had to put them in the coffin to win. Why was there a pinfall? Kamala ended up in the coffin anyway, but as the match was already over, a lot of the drama was gone. Still, this contest does have the distinction of being the best Undertaker vs Kamala match on pay-per-view in 1992. More on that later. Number 5. The Natural Disasters vs Money Inc. at WrestleMania 8 A good match can be ruined by a bad finish. This wasn't a good match. Just before Owen Hart and Skinner put on their five-star classic, the natural disasters of Earthquake and Typhoon challenged Ted DiBiase and Erwin R. Scheister for the World Tag Team titles. Despite the big lads being over his faces and Money Inc. being despised heels, this match drew very little reaction from the WrestleMania crowd. Unfortunately, it was just a bit of a plodding one. The big man got the advantage only for the baddies to cheat. This pattern repeated over and over again, the crowd losing more and more interest each time. And then what happens? Jimmy Hart pulled IRS out of the way of an earthquake splash and the heel champions just walked away. That was it. The villains taking a count out loss to keep their titles is a tried and tested wrestling ploy, but did it really have to come at the end of such a nothing match? And on the biggest show of the year too? No clear winner, no new champions, no nothing. This match was a disaster, all right. Number four, the Beverly Brothers versus the Bushwhackers at Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble 1992 is famous for one thing and one thing only. That guy who wouldn't put out his cigarette during Ric Flair's promo. Thanks for sorting them out, Mean Gene. In all seriousness, the show is most remembered and loved for the Royal Rumble match itself, won by the Nature Boy from the number three spot. The contest is still many fans' favorite Rumble of all time, often praised for its storytelling, Flair's endurance, the varied cast of stars, and of course, Bobby Heenan's magnificent performance on commentary. There were only four other matches on the rest of the card, ranging in quality from decent to pretty good fun. Except for one. One was really bad. The Beverly Brothers, aka Von Wagner's dad and not Von Wagner's dad, squared off against Butch and Luke of the Bushwhackers. As you might expect, this was a comedy match that would be perfectly fine to show a five-year-old. But guess what? I'm not five years old, and this is my video. This match was just hard to enjoy as an adult, full of goofy nonsense like butt-biting, tripping over, and that stupid dance the Bushwhackers do that I'll be seeing on repeat when I go to hell. An unfortunate blight on an otherwise great night of wrestling. Number 3. The Undertaker vs Kamala at SummerSlam Hey, look who's back. It is amazing that WWE put on another Taker Kamala match after their first one at SummerSlam went down like a lead balloon. This contest at Wembley had all the same problems as the one from Survivor Series, slow pacing, a lack of variety in moves, and so on. However, at least the one in November had the novelty of the casket at ringside and a proper outcome. Their first bout ended after less than three and a half minutes after Kamala's handler Kim Chi ran in and whacked Taker with his helmet. No, that wasn't a euphemism. Get your mind out the gutter. This ended the match in a DQ before Kamala squished Taker with a bunch of splashes only for the dead man to sit up and no sell them all. I mean, that was pretty cool. It's just a shame it all happened after the final bell instead of, I don't know, in the match itself. Number two, Nails vs Virgil at SummerSlam. When Nails went up against the big boss man at Survivor Series, he had veteran Ray Trailer to work with and the added interest of a giant pole sticking out of one of the turnbuckles. It still wasn't great, as we've seen, but it could have been much worse. When Nails fought Virgil at SummerSlam, he had neither of those things, and it showed. Congratulations really should be given out to these two, as they managed to bend the laws of physics such that this four-minute match felt like it lasted a hundred years. Nails chokes Virgil for a bit, then the babyface gets some offense in, then more choking, more offense, more choking, as I feel my eyeballs slowly start to melt inside my skull. The world's most popular wrestler isn't much better than Nails here either, unfortunately, hitting some pretty sloppy offense throughout. He would also lose the bout, passing out to, you'll never believe it, a chokehold. 
In terms of actual in-ring wrestling, this was undoubtedly the worst match of all of 1992. However, at least there wasn't a massive all-time botch in it, and at least it didn't come at the end of WrestleMania. Number 1. Hulk Hogan vs Sid Justice at WrestleMania 8 Imagine if Marvel secured the rights to Batman, teased a movie where Spider-Man fights him, and then changed their minds and subbed out Batman for Sid Justice. That is what WWE did when all signs pointed to Hulk Hogan facing Ric Flair in the main event of WrestleMania 8. For a variety of reasons that may never truly be known, the dream match was scrapped in favour of Flair facing Randy Savage and Hogan going up against Sid Justice in the night's main event. Hogan vs Sid is famous for two things, the fact that it wasn't Hogan vs Flair and Papa Shango's botched run-in. The future Godfather was supposed to break up Hogan's pinfall but missed his cue, forcing Sid to kick out of the heavily protected leg drop. This then led to a beatdown which brought out the Ultimate Warrior for the save, but it was all too little too late. Not only was the in-ring action subpar, not only was there a gigantic screw-up, not only did it come at the expense of another more interesting match, but this was the main event of WrestleMania. For all those reasons, Hogan vs Sid not only rounded off WrestleMania 8, but it rounds off this list as well. And if this video was that match, Shango's finally arrived to the ring now. See you next time.